Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your September 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. Now before we dive into this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become calm, centered, and at peace as you enter into the safe, loving space. All right. Now I'm going to be moving your Moonology and your Queen of the Moon cards over to the side. These will be layered on top of the tarot to really give Luna a voice of her own, to really let the moon speak for herself. Now I have this moon phase set up all right here with your spirit animals for this time. This reading goes from full moon to full moon, so from the 2nd of September to the 1st of October, from Pisces full moon to Aries full moon. How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Oh, goodness. There we go. And show me clearly. All right. Now the left-hand side, this is your inner self. Right. The middle is your emotional, your heart, and the right-hand side is your public self. So we start with the Queen of Wands. This is fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Very strong for those of you on, yeah, on the cusp with Sagittarius, Capricorn. You're also having a very strong connection to the Aries full moon. Then we have the Five of Pentacles, the Hanged Man, and Justice, which is a Libra energy, a time frame of September 23rd to October October 22nd. There we go. Then we have the Knight of Wands, again, very strong fire sign energy, the Two of Pentacles, the Four of Cups, the Ten of Swords. The Ace of Swords, the Eight of Cups, the Sun card, and the Four of Pentacles. Very interesting combination here. This whole time is permeated with a sense of knowing your mind, of knowing exactly what you want, but it is this gift that you are are reaching for this whole entire time. It permeates every single aspect, but it isn't something that you're going to see yourself being able to, to grip and to really... 
understand as much as you, you want to, because I do not have a court card here. It might be in your subconscious message, but I don't have a court card here of you taking this gift of knowledge and really making it into your own. It is guiding you. It is leading you. It is becoming a part of you during this time, and it is you know, moving you towards what it is that you desire, but it's not fully being taken, okay? So do be aware of that. You can take it as time goes on, and this is saying that as you walk away and find the balance within yourself and see the doors of prosperity opening because you're seeing yourself open what has once been shut, perspective changes, and you may very well take this gift and absolutely own it. There's there's a sense of happiness. You have the sun card, which is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. And that permeates every single aspect of your time. But you also have the vampiric energy. You have the four of pentacles, which is my vampiric energy card. The card of, you know, people wanting to take away your joy in order to make themselves feel better. So that is also here, Capricorn, something that you are going to have to be mindful of. You have a darkness before the dawn coming in and a justice and a balance moving you forward, which actually here, as this justice comes with the sword on the scale, you do take this gift and you do realize a lot more than you had originally expected from this time. So let's start off with this moon. This moon is the Pisces full moon. It is balancing spirituality with practicality. Now this is the mystic's moon. This is the dreamer's moon. This is the poet's moon and the witch's moon. But above all, this is the high priestess moon. And for you, Capricorn, you like to keep your feet firmly planted on the ground. You do. There's a brilliance and a practicality to you that is absolutely amazing. During this time, you're going to see yourself moving more towards an instinctual way of dealing with things. There is great prosperity for you personally and that you are moving towards in the public arena. But there are things that you are clearing out from your heart and from yourself that will really help you move forward in dedication, determination, and understanding. Now, as the veil is lifted from your eyes, because this is the High Priestess Moon, you see the mask that others wear so much more easily. Now, for you, Capricorn, I see you using this realization in a very practical but very bountiful way. You're making the most out of a situation that can become overwhelming because you're going to see that not everybody is is who they or how they want to be perceived as being. You also have a very thin veil between the practical world, the earthly world, and the spiritual world. This is a fantastic time for meditation. This is a fantastic time for any divination. This is a fantastic time for talking to your angels and your spirit guides and really having them answer you. This is also a time where you can find that you're greatest understanding, the most knowledge comes when you're in the bath, when you are taking a shower. This is also a fantastic time for Epsom salt baths and to charge your water. Now here, as creativity guides you, as this moon guides you, as your ancestors, all right, and those from the spirit world who want to see you achieve and succeed guide you, this is a time where you find the light of the moon brings the most knowledge to you brings a great sense of power, a great sense of understanding. Now, this is also where, this is also a time where we want to embrace compassion. And that's what you're wanting, Capricorn. You want practicality, you want understanding, but you also want a steady, solid foundation of compassion, of love, and of, of truth. And so here, you will find yourself really embracing and really drawn to deities and practices that really Amplify, exemplify, magnify, compassion. And you're going to find that you're using compassion a lot more as your, as your guiding point for this time. So you're very drawn to the goddesses of, you know, Kuan Yin and, you know, the Virgin Mary, the deities of these two beings come forward of Hestia. You know, you're going to find that you are really moved by those with tremendous hearts and a tremendous sense of compassion. This is also a time because you're seeing everything so really, all right, so profoundly, and it can be so harshly because our world is harsh, that you very much crave. You crave good night sleeps. You crave meditation. You crave, you know, prayer. You crave what grounds you. But for some of you Capricorns, okay, this craving of stabilization 
can also be a crave of escape. So sleep that leads to oblivion, like just kind of pulling the covers up over your head, being done, it's all too much type of sleep, alcohol, drugs. So just be mindful of that, especially if that is a way in the past that you have dealt with stressful situations. This can be a crutch that you want to, to lean on. And instead of this, there is a sense of really connecting to, to divinity, to your spirit guides, really using, using the truth that you see in a very positive way, in a way that really benefits you as we're moving forward. So you're balancing the spirituality with the practicality as you embrace the power of surrendering to the divine of compassion. Now this moves us to September 17th, which is when we have the new moon. The new moon is of course in Virgo, and this says a time to give rather than take. Now for you Capricorn, you're a planner, you're a person who likes to have a clear idea of things. People might laugh and say, you know, you're not you know, spontaneous or anything like that. You are in your own sense, but you like to have a well kind of, you like to have a well of a foundation, like a deep knowledge of the foundation for which you are building off of. And sometimes people can't see that. It seems, you know, a bit, a bit silly to them, but it's actually really quite brilliant what you do. And so here, when it's time to give rather than to take, it is a giving to yourself of knowledge, of understanding, of compassion, of truth, because this is a time of beginnings. And with beginnings, there are a lot of variables, right? So with a new moon, there come variables. There come times of questioning, times of really not being able to see things as clearly as we would like to. And also there is a sense of as you are moving forward, you're really looking at what you want to plant for, you know, for the time to come, for the months to come, the years to come. And you're looking at this time and you're looking at it with compassion, love, and understanding. And you're looking at how you can nourish this compassionate love and this beautiful understanding to nourish and to flourish the way that you want to. And so here, it's, it's really putting those intentions into action. And it's really planting and caring for what is truly important to you. Because this is also a time of heightened sensitivity, heightened intuition, and great passion that moves you forward. And so as you walk through this fresh threshold, you start to see things more profoundly. You start to see things more intensely. You suppose you start to see things more, more you. And that is, that is very lovely. And it moves us to the new moon, to the full moon in Aries. This is a time when great passion guides you forward. It says here, a fiery climax approaches. And this is what you are really seeing for yourself. A fiery climax of what you desire from life, of the way that you want to move forward, of what you love, of what you need. And there is this sense of passionate truth that is guiding you. And it really does crown you here with the Queen of Wands and the Knight of Wands. Knights, of course, protect queens. And so here, the heart is protecting the inner self. And there, we'll get into that in just a moment, but there is a balance that needs to be found here for you to be able to move forward the way that you want to, especially during this lunar cycle when you are so connected, but also so practical. When you are, you know, driven by the reality that you want to create within the world, but also the spiritual reality that you need to have as part of your beating heart and at, to, for it to become as natural to you as breathing. This leads us to the spirit animals for September. It's the brown bear spirit. It's the bear spirit and the owl spirit. And I really love these two spirit animals for you because they really do embody you. The, the bear spirit says, take time out. Take time out to look at what you have planted over your heart, to look and to nourish what you truly desire and what you need. The bear spirit talks of dominion over the self. It talks of authority and being larger than life. So you have the spirit energy around you that is larger than life. And the spirit energy protects and is committed to, to the perseverance and the prosperity of others, especially those who are weaker than them. And this is true mama bear spirit that is around. And I know people say, what about the papa bear? Well, in nature, you know, the papa bear goes off and he does his thing, but the mama bear is the one who takes care of the cubs, all right? And so that mama bear, if that cub wanders out, and, you know, 
let's say, gets into a neighborhood, that mama bear is going to be very close behind and people have to be very careful because that mama bear is astoundingly protective and astoundingly, you know, driven to care for and to make sure that that, that cup thrives. So this is the energy that you have around you protecting you, guiding you. It's very, it's very intense. It's very protective. It is very much a guide as you move forward. And because the bear is so beautifully, you know, rooted to the earth, and you, Capricorn, are so beautifully rooted to the earth, this is going to be a spirit energy that really, really works with you. Then we have the owl spirit. This says you see clearly now, and you do. You see clearly now because there is a depth of wisdom that the owl spirit brings. It pulls the veil from the eyes, just as the high priestess does. And the owl spirit is deeply connected to the high priestess. You have sharp vision, keen insight, keen understanding. Your intuition is fantastic. You need to trust it. You need to trust it because you're moving then into October, which has the spirit animals of the crow and the dove, which seems so contrary. You know, it seems like, wow, you couldn't have two greater opposites if you wanted to. Now, the crow spirit says, co-create with spirit. And this dove spirit says, be peace. And they both have beautiful meanings. And they both have beautiful words written under them. And yet when we think of the crow spirit, we think of a flock of crows, right? A group of crows is called a murder of crows. And then you have peace. So it can feel as if these spirit animals do not go together, as if there's something almost intrinsically wrong with the energy around October. However, that's not true. There's going to be something that is wrong with the perception, with the way that we're looking at things. But the crow spirit is absolutely beautiful. Not only is it calling you to co-create with spirit, to really be a part of spirit. It's calling for change. It's calling forth the sacred laws. It's telling you to trust in your intuition and your integrity, to stay to your word and to stay to your power. As you do so, you have a gentle compassion that releases you from the pains of the past and that releases you from not being able to transform the way that you want to. So you're absolutely embracing this crow spirit as it brings messages to you. And as it brings messages, you start to see the beauty that is within the feathers. You start to see the indigo and the deep blues. And as you do so, as you start to see beauty in, what's once, in what once seemed very plain, you start to embrace peace. You see the messages of peace that come forward, peace and hope, especially to those of us whose hearts weigh heavy, to you know, those of us Capricorn that have this, this sense of, oh my gosh, I'm not going to find this peace, and maybe it's meant for everybody else, but not for me. No, there's a gentle compassion that really calls to the Pisces moon, the former full moon, and calls you forward. As you do this, again, you release the pain that has held you back, and you are set free. And that's very much where the Queen of Wands comes in. Passion, connection, beauty, love, desire, as you move forward. This is the reason for getting out of bed in the morning. This is what you want from yourself and from your life. Is it hard work? Absolutely. The Queen of Wands is the hand, hands-on queen. She is the one who is ready to spring from her throne. She is the one who is ready to roll up her sleeves and really get things done, just like the King of Wands. And this energy for you, Capricorn, mixed with your earthly energy, again, you're very grounded during this time, fire and earth, very much part of this earth, okay? They move you forward. They move you forward in a way that you, you hadn't realized that you needed. And this queen of wands is compassionate, yes, but also is going to be the queen that lights you know, a fire under the tush and says, all right, now it's time to get things done. Now it's time to get moving. Apathy, you know, feeling overwhelmed, feeling as if you know, there's too much on your plate. It starts to, to seep away. It can be there, yes, most definitely. But it's like, no more am I being ruled by it. And you're going to find, for some of you Capricorns who have become rather like overwhelmed, you're going to find that there's a passion again. There is a, a beauty again. There is a reason to give, again to move forward, to keep going. And it leads you, this, this passion, this desire, this get out of bed, this move forward, this conquer the world energy that the Queen of Wands brings. And, of course, connection to the full moon in October, which is going to be 
very powerful for you because the full moon shows that fiery climax, shows that determination and that distinction moving you forward. It brings you to the Five of Pentacles. Now, the Five of Pentacles is, is wealth, but it's also feeling on the outside of wealth. Capricorn, you may very well have felt like everybody else gets to have what you value and what you value as much as money, but not you. You know, you might sit there and see and see people living their life and posting their posts and just being so terribly happy, so terribly contented, having all the best stuff. And you're like, well, I'd, I'd really like that. But I'm on the outside of it. It's not a part of me. Spirit is saying visualize. I am a huge fan of visualization, especially when we're healing, right? So instead of being on the outside, in the snow, on the outside of this prosperity, on the outside of the warmth that lays beyond the, the, the gate, the fence, see yourself walking in. Just visualize yourself in the snow, in the cold, huddled, trying to keep warm, teeth chattering, fingers a bit numb and, and tingly, you know, just very uncomfortable, right? See yourself walking forward, walking to this place that is filled with light and laughter and people just having a really good time, laughing and talking and you longing to be a part of it and thinking, oh no, I can't. I can't just crash their party. Their party. I can't just, you know, I can't just walk in. But feel how the warmth calls to you. Feel how the laughter makes you smile, even though you're uncomfortable right now. Feel how you want to be warm and joyful and happy. See yourself reaching for the doorknob. See yourself taking those steps and entering. Feel the warmth rush over you, almost too hot because you've been so cold. And as you walk through that doorway, as a smile crosses your face because it smells like the best thing ever, the scents that make you happy, that make you feel safe and secure and loved come forward. As you feel the warmth wrap around you, as the laughter and the chatter fills your ears and you look around. And this is not a room of strangers. This is a room of your angels, of your spirit guides, of the people who love you best and most throughout lifetimes coming forward to see you succeed, to see you claim wealth, to see you walk in a truth that had been forgotten. And it's that knowledge that just changes the game. You have the hangman right here. The hangman does not see things the same way as everybody else. And you know what? Why should you? Why should you? The hangman is power and truth. The hangman is being different. And so what if you're different? There is a part of you, Capricorn, that does want to fit in. You just do. It's, it's the Capricorn way. It's the earthly way. It's like, okay, I got this. I can be a part of this. I, I get this game. And there's another part of you that says, I'm done. I'm done with masks and I'm done with lies and I'm done with hurts and pains and disappointments. I know that hurts and pains and disappointments are a part of life. But you're done with living up to other people's expectations and putting yours on the back burner. Responsibilities, yes, astoundingly important. They make us. They make us who, the, who we are and who we need to be. But you see the world differently than others. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. And because you see the world differently, what's important to you, what guides you, what makes you, what molds you is different. And it's astoundingly powerful. It leads you to justice. Justice for yourself, justice of understanding, 
a balancing of the scales, an embrace of the truth, a moving forward where you need to be. This is Libra Energy, a time frame of September 23rd to October 22nd. This is knowledge and truth coming together. This is also being just to yourself. A lot of times we would like to go back and erase all the hardships, the pains, the disappointments from our lives. To move it away and say, no, no, thank you. That doesn't get to be a part of me. But if you take away the pain, you take away the wisdom. And Capricorn, you've worked too hard to be foolish. You move forward in justice for yourself, a balancing the scales of what you desire, of what you want, what you need, in order to move forward towards a place that waits for you, towards your truth. And it leads you to the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is passion and creativity. The Knight of Wands is integrity and truth. The Knight of Wands is why we're on this earthly plane. And the Knight of Wands is the second fastest moving night. Now for you, Capricorn, as an earth sign energy, you're the slowest moving night because you sit there and what you defend and what you fight for and what you move forward in is your absolute truth, absolute gospel. And you will, and you are able to have a solid foundation as you move. It might be frustrating because it's slow build, but it's, it's good. Here, this is a passion that wants you to move faster, all right? This is a passion that says, don't forget me. Don't, you know, overanalyze me. Let me run forward and free and let me help you. Let me guide you to that joyous place, to that place of, of happiness and understanding and passion and creativity. And as you embrace the Knight of Wands, as it calls you forward and you see it coming really around the full moon in October, you'll see yourself towards the last week of September, you'll see yourself really moving forward in this fiery kind of determination. Passion will be high, meaning that, meaning that you're looking at the bigger picture of what you want and you're saying, yes, okay, I am a person who plans, I am a person who looks at things and gains understanding, but during this time, I am also a person who acts and who moves forward, and who knows what it is that they want. And as you embrace this, you have the Two of Pentacles coming. And the Two of Pentacles is your prosperity, right? It's the spirituality, it's the practicality, it's what you want, it's what everybody else wants of you, it is what you need and what you desire, and everything that you think you should be, and you're juggling it, and you're juggling it, and you're juggling it. Now you see how she's standing on a very rickety, rickety old, old bridge okay she doesn't have a solid foundation and that's what happens with the two of pentacles we're so busy looking at what we're balancing for everybody else we forget to balance ourselves make sure make sure capricorn that you have your feet firmly planted on the ground that you are not completely distracted by what everybody else is demanding and what everybody else wants because as you move from the sense of feeling like a pauper, feeling like you're on the outside of wealth, then you start to take on too much. It's kind of like, okay, I'm never going to let anything drop because I need everything in the air and I need this prosperity and I need this bounty and there's a fear that there won't be enough. I do see you here and Spirit is showing you walking away from that mindset. It's that mindset of there's not going to be enough. It's the mindset that you are embracing of there is enough. Okay, I might need to be creative. I might need to look at things differently. I might need to go down different paths. All right, you might have thought Capricorn, this is the way that you get things done. And Capricorn for you, that is, that is such a, a typical way to look at things. And it's not a bad way at all. It's the way that gets things done. It gets things done right, safely, securely, and it moves you forward. But sometimes, sometimes you have to, you think outside of the box, you know, sit there and say, if I were an angel, I'd tie down my wings type of deal. It's from one of my favorite poems. And it's like, okay, I can still have success. It might not be the same level of success or it might be a very different success than others talk of, but I can still have that success. 
I just need to go my way. I just need to look at my talents, my abilities, and see how they all fit together to have a bliss that comes on the side. And then that bliss that comes on the side, as you uphold your responsibilities and as you take care of things, can become the bliss that is the center, main focus of your whole entire life. And here's the thing. We get caught up in time. And divinity knows that about us, and divinity laughs, because divinity does not get caught up in time. It says you got there, and well done. Most people live their whole entire lives never getting to where they were supposed to be, right? Never reaching that realization. Here you are. And that's why you feel out of balance. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, how do I move forward? This is where the Four of Cups comes in. The Four of Cups is divinity handing you a gift. You have gifts. You have three cups around you. You have these gifts. But divinity hands you another one and says, this is an answer that you've been seeking. And because your perspective is changing, because you're, you're looking at things differently and honestly for yourself, you take that gift. You start to take that gift. It's going to be hard because you're not really going to know it and you're not really going to be aware of everything that is needed. But you take that gift and you see it. You gain a bigger understanding. You gain a better understanding of yourself. And it leads you to the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is wisdom gained. Hard earned? Absolutely. This is not like, wow, I got to wake up one day and be wise. This is, I struggled. I fought. And it seems so much easier for everybody else. But for me, it's a battle. And that's not fair. And what you're seeing is a completion of a cycle. A completion of that way of looking at things. Because remember, everything that shapes you brings you value. Everything, every hardship, every pain, every disappointment, was it for nothing? It wasn't. It was to bring you to where you need to be, to where you want to be, body, mind, and spirit. And as you do this, you see wisdom more openly and honestly. You see what you've gained and what you desire and the way that you want to move forward. And as this comes, you find your mind reborn. You're also greatly connected here to spirit, all right, and to people in your life who have passed, okay, but also people from past lives who want to guide you forward, ancestors who want to see you succeed. You're taking knowledge and you're moving to a place you hadn't expected, but you are leaving behind who you used to be because through all the wisdom that you have gathered, through everything that you have been through, you're reborn. And you're not the same person that you once were. And a part of you is going to want to mourn that. But Spirit is saying, don't. I mean, not don't. Mourn if you need to, most definitely. But don't sit there and think, who I once was is better than who I am today. Because that would be mourn. That would be wrong. This is who divinity has meant you to be. And this is powerful. It moves you to obtaining knowledge with the justice card here that you absolutely take. And it permeates everything because it's taken in such a way where it balances the scales and you might never know that you touched, you touched it. It's a keen mind. It's a sharp intellect. It's a passion. It's a power. It's a determination. It's a wisdom. It's something fought for. One does not become a master swordsman by, you know, sitting on the couch eating chips. This was something that took years of practice. And people back in medieval times, especially, well, noblemen, they lived and died by their sword, quite literally. And here, it is, it is the same. It's you live and die by the power of your mind and by your wits. And here, there is a truth. There is an understanding that divinity is leading you towards that opens up doors. And it shows you, as you're embracing this passion, as you're embracing this intuitive, beautiful power, you see yourself with the Eight of Cups, walking away from what you once thought you would love, saying, no, I'm, I'm not walking down a path that isn't my truth and my honor and myself. I don't get to sacrifice myself for what others want me to be. This can be, this can be an ending as severe as a divorce. 
and that's what the Eight of Cups brings. Now, for some of you watching, it is a divorce. And that ending, though it could be heartbreaking, can also be astoundingly freeing, and exactly what is needed. You walk through this archway with love guiding you, passion leading you forward. The end is a new beginning. And that's what you have to keep on telling yourself. Because for some of you Capricorns, it's, it's going to be hard. Because this is a mindset. This is something you, you thought you should love or you thought should be good. And sometimes the letting go of what we had dreamed it would be, not the reality of it, but the dream of it, the dream of that job, the dream of that person, the dream of you know, the way that we were supposed to be. Letting go of it can be a lot more painful than walking in our truth, saying, I need to. The question, what will people think? Will they laugh? Will they understand? Will they hate me? You walk forward, guided by love, guided by light, to new beginnings, and a release. A release because you do not need you do not need to be held in the past anymore. And as you walk away, as you are brave and courageous and truthful and strong, and you embrace your strength, it leads you to the sun. Joy and happiness and success and beauty. The sun is the happiest card in the whole entire deck. It is a reborn, it is a rebirth into your truth. It is a beauty of your passion. It is a symphony of your soul. It's happiness. Now, do know that when you embrace happiness, people want to take you by eyes. They do. They sit there and they think, why can't I be happy too? Why does it get to be so easy for you, Capricorn? Why does everything just fall into your lap? Here's the deal. It hasn't been easy at all. But again, people see what they want to see. And people usually always see that their struggles are bigger than anybody else's. And so here, know that you've earned this happiness. You've earned this joy, this strength, this beauty, this understanding. You've earned this power to move forward and this grace of the heart. Let yourself be happy. Don't try to justify it or, you know, explain it. Embrace it. Let yourself laugh. Let yourself smile. Know your truth. Because as you do so, you break yourself free from vampiric bonds. You break yourself free from the people who have held you back, who made you feel small, who talked negativity over you, who saw you and said, that's what I want, and whose jealousy corrupted. With the Four of Pentacles, I like to visualize the golden light of spirit around me. Right? Then visualize your angels this beautiful flaming sword and they cut they cut the golden light that's all around you and it falls away you're shattered open and there's this nothingness for a few heartbeats it's just a silence and a peace and then that golden light of the universe reforms itself around you again beautiful and sparkling and this time there are no corruptions around it no little bits of sewer sludge coming in from the anger, despair, and hardships that we accumulate over this world. The negativity from others. The hurts and the pains. And you see yourself feeling lighter. And you look at the happiness that you want. You look at the power that you want. And you move forward in that truth. You move forward in that blessing. You move forward in that understanding. And there is a beauty to you as you free yourself from this vampiric energy. And you do this time and time again. I mean, cutting away the vampiric energy isn't just a one-time deal. You could do this every day. You could do this every hour if you wanted to. Because here, these are the blockages that keep us from wealth. The negativity of others that rings so loudly through our souls. The thought that money is evil, you know, the old saying, money is the root of all evil. The thought of 
we just don't have any. It's always going to be a struggle. It's always going to be hard. Or that person who said, oh, really? That's your dream. Do you know how many people dream the same thing? What makes you think you're so special? It's a million hurts, a million other people's truths that we take on as our own, that hold us back. And you're releasing yourself from it. And this moon, this compassionate, beautiful moon, is letting you see the truth of it all and helping to release you. Now let's see what Luna has to say. How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Capricorn be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. The masculine, extremes, protection. I like that. It's very sexy right there. Hunger. Confidence is your key to success. What do you need to release? The energy is gaining momentum. Take time to breathe out. Your commitment is being tested. So you have very strong masculine energy around you, Capricorn, wanting you to move forward, protecting you, guiding you. This is the lunar god. And so here, this is that masculine energy moving you, seeing the cycles, gaining understanding. This is power and this is force. And this is determination. This is dedication. And this is a sense of... The energy of this moon, it connects you with compassion and the emotions and this overarching theme of the High Priestess, most definitely. So it is a very feminine moon. But for you also, Capricorn, it shows you the mechanics of things, how things work, why things get put together a certain way, what moves things forward. And that's going to be the masculine side of this moon for you that you are guided by, that you are seeing. And it moves you to extremes, yes, because you have the extreme of the high priestess energy, you have the extreme of the lunar, the lunar god energy, and it shows you, it gives you a different perspective. And both the perspectives are extreme and powerful and, well, quite frankly, extremely powerful. And it protects you. There is the sense of this divine being watching over you, guiding you, protecting you, moving you forward you know, helping you to see and to become so much more. And as it protects, you're hungry. You're hungry for this change. You want it to move you towards something more, towards something new. And you're hungry for the balance to come in. The confidence. Confidence is key for you to succeed, for you to move forward, for you to find exactly what it is that you want. And as the confidence is key, you ask yourself, what do I need to release? What is holding me back? What has, you know... What has brought me to my knees? And what do I carry that are my hurts, my pains, my disappointments, my armor for not succeeding, for not moving forward the way that I know in my soul that I need to? Is it that I'm just not good enough? Is it I'm not smart enough? Is it, you know, I'm not talented enough? What is it that's holding you back? And how do you destroy it? And how do you move forward in the passionate truth that is your understanding and your very being. It leads you to the energy gaining momentum. 
the energy of change, the energy of knowledge, the energy of leaving what is no longer right. It brings you to take time to breathe out, to just be, to just connect, to just let go. And as you do this, you're committed to the bigger picture, but you're committed, your commitment is being tested. It's saying, where do you really want to be? How do you really want to move forward? Is this just lip service or is this your soul's passion? Is this what you desire? Because you're being tested. And what this moon is seeing is what your soul truly wants and where your soul truly wants to be. As you release the expectations of others, as you release the former expectations of yourself, and as you let yourself say, how do I move forward in success? And how do I embrace this powerful, beautiful change? Your subconscious Luna message is the path, the path least followed, the path that can seem the hardest, the path that is your truth. Anything worth having is never easy. And as you see this path, this crooked ladder, this portal, this change, your Luna message is deepened by the fact that, I, that emotions are running high, by the fact that you are emotionally invested in all of this, because this is your story. This is your existence. Emotions run high anyway. This is a Pisces full moon. It is all about feelings, all about compassion and love and understanding and truth and deeper emotions. Use those emotions to guide you, to move with you. Your subconscious tarot message is the Four of Swords. You have the repeat of the number four here. Four is a healing number. Four is a number of the soul. Four is a number for the homes that we live in, for security, for transformation. This is looking at everything that you've been through and giving homage to how well you've done. This is looking at the battle which is life and saying, and doing my best. And that's pretty darn good. You move forward in your knowledge, but you have to honor your past and everything that you've been through. All right, Capricorn. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation. Once again, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of the positive energy, a moving towards our goals, our passions, and our desires as we believe with all our hearts in the strength and beauty that we were created in. So take a nice deep breath in exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. forward in peace and harmony, Capricorn.